I got halfway into the uh, transmission job on this car before I realized I wanted to make a video, so um, I already got the pan off and everything sitting over there. Uh, this is a uh, 1991 Cadillac Brougham, and the um, reason I'm changing the transmission fluid is the fact that it's uh, slipping pretty badly, and it's something that I already knew about. Um, when I purchased the car back in uh, March actually I ran the Carfax on it back in February and um, because I saw that the uh, transmission has been completely replaced not once but not but, but twice as well as the uh, valve lifters being replaced in the motor it took me a long time to um, actually decide to uh, to buy this car because um, when you see stuff like that I'm starting to wonder how this thing's been treated you know it's got a big old Chevy 350 in it so were they doing burnouts all the time with it uh, what was going on there really is it's really kind of unusual to go through two transmissions on these things but I finally um, decided to buy it, and uh, for the for the simple reason that the uh, car is in such magnificent shape that I I just couldn't pass it up. And I'll do a more complete video on this thing when it's actually all put back together and able to be driven on a on a test drive. But you just don't see these cars in this kind of shape anymore at all. It's uh, all original all original paint it's uh... not flaking off or peeling or anything like that on the on the horizontal surfaces at all all the chrome is in wonderful condition and it's got the uh... relatively sought after uh... 5.7 liter V8 or 350 Chevy V8 so that's uh really a nice combination to have on these cars and uh, it's even got the original vinyl top no cracks it's got a little bit of checking uh, due to age the car is uh, coming up on 25 years old but to to have an original vinyl top like that on a car this old is just really outstanding usually they're all peeling off or they've already been replaced and if they've been replaced they don't always do such a good job. This car is not seeing a whole lot of sunlight. You can see a little bit of fading in the Cadillac emblem. Most of the time they're completely faded. So this was a garage kept car and um, aside from the transmission and engine, which I still don't know why um, if they, if it's been replaced or the lifter has been replaced. Aside from that, the car is just in great shape. If you look inside, I had to open the door a little hard there because the car is on jack stands and uh, it's putting stress on the frame just a little bit. It's pulling the body back, as you can see on the bumper. When she's back on the ground, um, the body will be in perfect alignment again. But. Uh, interior is absolutely perfect. This is the uh, the uh, Brum Delegance package. There's no rips and tears in the seats which is just really very unusual for a car that's sold. The leather is still nice and soft. Feels like brand new and there is absolutely no cracks on the dashboards. They tend to crack right along here in the stress points everything is just in uh, wonderful shape especially these armrests these armrests tend to crack here and look really bad these look like brand new as well as the uh, body filler panels these flexible panels always tend to crack and they look like new so there's a story with me and Cadillacs I'll uh, probably end up uh, telling when I do the uh, 
walk around video of this thing, but looking at this car in detail, I just uh, could not pass this thing up. Even if I had to uh, buy a uh, remanufactured lawn block and a transmission both and stick them in here, even if the car didn't even have an engine and transmission and had to come in here on a flatbed tow truck, it still would be worth the money. It's just such a a nice car. It's in beautiful condition. It's basically like brand new. I mean, no dents or anything like that. Body is just perfectly straight. There's uh, no rust on it anywhere. Floor pans are in wonderful shape. Not a speck of rust anywhere. New exhaust. So, just couldn't pass it up. And because of the car facts, um, I knew exactly what I was getting into. And I did test drive the car. And the transmission, um, even though it was replaced, is uh, still slipping. And I went ahead and bought the car anyway with a slipping transmission. The owner of the car didn't really come down. He came down on his price a little bit, but because the car is in such good shape and he didn't really believe the transmission was slipping, he didn't come down but too much. But we finally agreed on a price, and uh, a price I'm happy with. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to investigate why this thing might be slipping. And I've got nothing to lose. You know, I don't always... I've got a lot of cars, um, and I don't always buy cars that are in perfect mechanical shape. Sometimes I'll buy a car like this that might have some mechanical issues if the rest of the car is in good shape. It's still, in my mind, um, a good deal. So, transmission was uh, first replaced at 108,000 miles back in 01. And then it looks like it was last replaced in 2002 at 110,000 miles. So they're not putting too many miles on this thing. Currently the vehicle has about 132,000 miles. So the transmission, so this was done about 13 years ago and about uh, 22,000 miles ago. So the transmission technically is still fairly new. So one of the first things uh, to think about, and one of the reasons I'm making this video, um, I've done lots of oil changes, transmission fluid changes, rear end changes. You guys have seen plenty of videos of that, and I don't want to be too redundant on the channel. Uh, this car basically is set up just like the uh, Buick Roadmaster that I bought uh, last year, All, except that the uh, car is actually um, appears to be a lot better built. Actually, it's kind of nice to. Uh, get into the guts of this thing and see what actually sets the Cadillacs apart from the the other cars like the Buicks and things like that. But um, the, well, the main reason for the video is uh, I want to see or show you guys how I would diagnose a situation like that. Just because you have a slipping transmission doesn't always mean it's it's dead and you got to go ahead and replace the entire transmission or rebuild it. So, uh, one of the first things I'm doing is uh, changing out the transmission fluid. It is slightly burned. It's not as bad as uh, I've smelled before with other cars, but it's definitely um, burned, as you can imagine, with uh, slipping clutches and bands. And that'll get me into a situation where I have a known quantity. I can't really start diagnosing what's going on with the transmission unless I know the fluid is in good condition and the proper kind of fluid. Uh, so it's all about eliminating variables. So I've already got the pan dropped and the uh, filter out. And actually the pan is not in that bad a shape considering how much this thing slips. Basically it's uh, slipping from 3 to 4. And um, you can kind of uh, get it to not slip by dropping it out of overdrive. And then reaching speed and then popping it into overdrive. So there's something going on with a 3 to 4 shift either the piston or the valve or something valve body but um 
considering all that, this pan is in not, not that bad a shape. There is a little bit of sludge built up in there, a little bit of clutch material, but no big chunks of metal. Magnet, you can still see the ridges on there. I've seen the magnets sometimes that have so much crap built on them, you can't even tell there's ridges on it. And uh, one of the things I've noticed when I got the pan off of there, um, is I, I try to smell the fluid as much as I can. And uh, the fluid kind of smells like it might have some petroleum distillates in there. It smells like it. The closest thing I can think of would be motor flush. If you've ever smelled motor flush, it kind of has that smell to it. And the transmission fluid is uh, appears to be a little thin. So I would not be surprised if this fluid is contaminated somehow, if somebody did not try to use some kind of transmission flush at one point in the past 13 years. It's certainly possible, but it is a variable, and that's what we want to do is, is get back to a, a known state, put good fluid in here, and then go from there and see what we got. What I'm suspecting is, and this is encouraging that I don't see a lot of debris in here, just um, some sludge I can clean up with a towel. That's encouraging because it tells me that the transmission might have uh, a lot of life left in it yet, despite the slipping. As long as I can get that slipping issue resolved. Uh, filter looks really good. And whoever did this transmission uh, used good parts. It's a uh, SPX Fill Trans filter. One of the best filters you can get. The filter doesn't have any kind of crud built up in there or anything like that. You can see my fingerprints and stuff between the bare metal and the sludge. Uh, nothing really too terribly out of the ordinary. I'm going to go in there with a new filter and a new gasket. And then um, once I do that, what I think the issue might be, what I want to check next, is the, uh, I'm zooming in on it or trying to, that top cable right there, they call the TV cable or throttle valve cable. Well, I'm going to uh, assume that that might be out of adjustment and that's causing the transmission to try to shift a little bit too early when it's not supposed to and that might be the source of the problem. So. Um, I'm basically going to uh, take care of all the basics first, all the low-hanging fruit first, make sure I got good fluid, make sure that I've got a nice clean filter so I've got good line pressure, and then make sure that I've got everything adjusted properly, and then we'll see what the situation is, see if the thing is still trying to slip on me. And if it is, then we'll go ahead and get a little bit deeper into it, we'll uh, drop the pan again, and uh, take out the valve body and start inspecting for uh, missing check balls, the wrong kind of gasket was used, uh, a sticking valve, you know, those kinds of things. Just get deeper and deeper into it. I know the clutches are good because once it shifts into the gear, it's supposed to, it holds the gear. It's just um, shifting a little bit on the slippy side. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything all cleaned up, put a new filter in there and clean the pan up, get some fluid in here, and then we'll uh, take this thing on a test drive and um, see where we can go from there. You don't have to have the tires off when you do this job. The reason I have the tires off is because the uh, brake was squealing on me, and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't hitting a wire sensor of some kind and scoring the rotor. Plus. Uh, Although I got this car back in March, this was really the first time I've worked on it. It's just been too cold and nasty outside. So, um, these don't look like the original GM rotors or OEM rotors. These look like aftermarket rotors. And uh, they're actually in really good shape. Rotors don't last forever. They're a wear item, so it's not surprising to see different rotors on here. Hopefully whoever did this job uh, adjusted the wheel bearings properly. And it's got plenty of pad life left. But you can see on that brake line some checking on the rubber there. So this thing is going to need new brake lines uh, sometime soon. Nothing too major. And uh, just like the Buick, um, which is really encouraging to see, all of the uh, 
suspension parts have Zerk fittings on there so they can be greased. So I'm going to go ahead, when I finish the transmission job, while I got it up in the air, go ahead and grease the upper and lower ball joints, as well as the uh, inner and outer tie rods. Not sure how long that's been since it's been done, but it's very encouraging to work on these old cars like this because they were built to last and you can actually grease these fittings uh, when you do your oil changes or maybe every other oil change and uh, not have to worry about the ball joint popping off or going bad and having to replace them. And it's uh, also pretty impressive how this thing is, how well made this car is. I've never worked on a, this particular body style of Cadillac before, but you've got this extra brace here that goes to the transmission mount that you got to remove in order to get the pan off. And then, unlike the other, unlike the Roadmaster I've got, it has this extra brace here on the uh, frame where it attaches to the control arm to increase the rigidity. So that's a nice feature. Then of course, as most people know, it's got these extra bracings in the engine compartment. So I think, uh, I think I figured out part of the reason why these things ride so smooth and quiet is because the, uh, the body and the frame are very, very stiff. There's not a lot of rattles in here. It looks like the engineers have done a very good job of um, stiffening up the chassis on this thing, um, making it a lot more quiet than some of its competitors. But uh, anyway, I'm going to put this thing back together, fill it up with fluid, see if I can flush the converter. I haven't gotten the uh, inspection pan off of it. Hopefully there's a drain plug. There probably isn't, but I'll... Uh, figure out what to do about that when the time comes. Okay, I got the uh, gasket sealing surface all cleaned up and dried off as best I could. And I put the inspection plate back on and cleaned it up for the torque converter. There is no torque converter drain plug on this vehicle, unfortunately, just like the uh, Buick. So I did the best I could by uh, running some compressed air through a hose up into the uh, transmission filter inlet there and actually uh, got quite a bit of fluid coming out of the transmission. I may end up uh, cracking one of the cooler lines uh, when the engine's running just to drain any remaining fluid I couldn't get with the air pressure. And looking at the uh, valve body from this angle and studying carefully with the condition of it, I did notice that there is one valve here different than all the others. I don't have the service manual for this car yet, so I'm not sure if this is normal. But if you look at this valve, it looks pretty beat up. It looks like somebody hammered on it somehow. Uh, it is retained, so it's not like it's coming out in this direction, hitting the oil pan and uh, damaging it, but it looks like this valve is just a lot looser than all the others. These others are pretty tight and they're actually recessed into the valve body where this one is sticking out and has some play. This is probably just a cap and the valve itself is farther down that way. When you push on it you can see some fluid squirt out. So it's not stuck but at the same time, um, this is a definitely worth keeping an eye on. I need to get the shop manual for this thing and see if this valve is supposed to be sticking out like this by about maybe one or two millimeters compared to all the other valves. I don't know which component this valve controls, whether it's one to two shift or three to four shift or um, reverse or anything like that, so I'm not sure yet, but that's definitely something to, uh, to keep an eye on, particularly with the condition that it's in compared to all the others. This is a um, factory remanufactured transmission from General Motors. It's not some fly-by-night company that did it. 
this was done at the uh, dealership in uh, North Carolina where the car was originally purchased and owned but um, you know maybe they just forgot to put that in all the way or maybe that's normal I don't know I'm gonna go ahead and uh, check the torque on these bolts make sure the valve body is nice and tied up against the transmission and uh, go ahead and put some fluid in it well the transmission fluid is all changed on this thing now and um, as I suspected there wasn't really any change in the symptoms it uh, still slips although not quite as bad um, so the next thing I'm gonna do once I get the service manual for this thing is go ahead and do the throttle cable adjustment and also look and see if I can find out uh, what that valve in there is supposed to look like that I showed you earlier that looked kind of damaged to some degree and loose and not fully seated in the bore. Um, so I'll be taking out the valve body potentially and uh, inspecting all the valves and check balls and things like that. And if that doesn't get it, I'll likely go in with a uh, Remanufacturer transmission. I've got a transmission jack and I've done it before on the uh, 95 Crown Victoria So it's something I can do It's uh, a bit involved, but not terribly difficult And I think this car is most definitely worth something like that. I knew the uh, issue with the transmission going into this thing Before I even bought it. So this is not a uh, total surprise, but the car is quite drivable you just have to uh, when you accelerate from a stop, leave it in third gear manually, and then when you want to go to overdrive, manually shift it into overdrive. It's it's a three to four upshift that's slipping on this thing. Uh, the one to two upshift is somewhat slipping, but not quite as much as the three to four. But definitely the car is uh, drivable, and that'll give me some time to uh, figure out uh, what steps to take next.